Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Excuse me, young man! Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? How'd Doc get himself into... Doc? Doc is his nickname. I'm good friends with Carl. You are? Really? Oh, but I need an unbiased opinion for my story. Pretend you don't know him. How would you feel about his heroic act of destruction? There's gotta be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You've got an honest look about you. You do support the side of righteousness, I trust. Well, I'm not so big on bomb blasts. Yes, but this bomb blasted a speakeasy, the very symbol of lawlessness and corruption. You're all for cleaning up the town, aren't you? Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? No, nah, not really. That's the spirit! Destroy them with indifference! If we refuse to patronize their establishments and glorify their wicked exploits, they'll soon be exposed for the pathetic wretches they are! May I get your name? Michael Corleone. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Corleone. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before! What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up! Doc. I gotta find Doc. Who are you and what do you want? Can I talk to, uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um, no. Then scram! Doc! <gasps> Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> The automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Great Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse! Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Why don't we tell the authorities? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? Why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of atomic gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puffy mass of bones and gristle. 
Who writes like that? According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. I should have guessed. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc. You're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me! 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed to- Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. McFly? Biff? Kid! Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly! The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it! If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid, I'll just... Run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Aw. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Brown result. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Hey, 
Hey, how you doing, Einie? Don't touch those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? Or from the patent office? I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket-powered drill? Of course, of course! Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning? Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel! I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> it's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here! How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I guess you won't talk about your business. Why not? I got nothing to hide. I recently acquired controlling interest in the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. Isn't a soup kitchen an odd line of business for a guy like you? I like soup. Plus, I got a heart as big as all outdoors. Uh, buff a little harder. I want to see myself in the toes. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What'd you do? Oh. <clears throat> Give me that hat, you lousy crook! Emmett! 